All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, what am I doing for fairies? Good. Here, I guess this is the last uh, dungeon, anyways. Yeah, so I guess uh, that's all the Zelda games now. Uh, well, all the mainline ones. I know there's the uh, Hyrule Warriors and Link's Crossbow Training and stuff like that, but uh, and the, the Tingle games. But I don't think I've really played any of them. So, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, I don't know, my general thoughts about the series was that they were, I think, largely getting worse as they went on. Uh, they started off being about, like, you know, as Miyamoto said, they were his, like, uh, experiences just exploring, you know, no map or anything, just going along. You know, finding stuff, uh, and they really kind of lost sight of that and became more and more about, uh, you know, cutscenes and tutorials and, uh, uh, you know, hand holding and, uh, you know, just all that. Uh, and the, the, you know, the puzzles, which were never, you know, they've never been really good puzzles compared to like other puzzle games. Uh, you know, some of the kind of overarching uh, dungeon puzzles were kind of neat, like where you're moving the entire dungeon or whatever, like the the water dungeon, water level, and stuff like that. But uh, they they largely, I don't think, were really uh, that worthwhile. Uh, oh, I can't. Uh, okay. You know, I think it's because they wanted, like, the larger audience, like, you know, they wanted little kids and stuff, and, uh... Alright, so, I think... Uh, okay. It's the... You just gotta do it in the right order. Yeah, I think they just wanted, like, more kids and stuff to play it, uh... You know, I think later the Zelda games, they kind of became like, you know, the participation trophy of games. Like, uh, they were designed just to make you feel smart without actually requiring anything. Uh... Yeah, I always remember that. Uh, like, you know, you'd go into a room and it'd be, you know, the camera would pan over to like, a. I know, a switch, and then do a locked door, or whatever, and so you'd walk over and hit the switch, and then it'd be like, do 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 you know, congratulations, you know, you're so smart, you, you know, look at you, you figured it out, when, you know, it was, it's obvious, but, like, you know, the entire game, I think, kind of became like that, where it was just, uh, or, you know, like, the games, all of them, they just started to become like that, where it was about making you feel smart, rather than actually requiring anything. Okay, there's a, there's a hidden...
Oh, I've got more bombs than I've got magic. That's why I'm doing this. There. Yeah, so they became just, you know, any kid can turn it on and just, you know, feel smart and whatever. Oh, and I think Skyward Sword was kind of like the peak of this, where, uh, you know, there wasn't really any thinking or anything involved. It was really just, you know, you go through and Fi tells you all the answers and... Uh, you know, the story was set up to be kind of like this grand thing where it's like, oh, you know, look, this is Zelda, it's got this amazing story with all this lore and the timeline and stuff, and, you know, really it too was just, you know, they were just making it up as they went. I don't think they really cared, you know, they, you know, they made Zelda 1 and it was, you know, bad guy captures princess, go save her, and, you know, here's some other fluff th uh, thrown in. And then, you know, like the, I don't think they really cared about the timeline or anything, so they made one, and then they made two, and were like, okay, well, you know, it's a sequel, so I guess it's got to be two, and it's got to take place after it, because that's just what you did at the time. It was like, okay, we made the first game. Uh, I guess we gotta make the second game now, and so it'll be, you know, Zelda 2, of course, and it'll take place after, and... Uh, okay, I was hoping for uh, another heart in here, but... Uh... Reminds me of the Crystal Caves in Dark Souls. Are these Lynels? Okay, so here's Ganon's place. I'm just checking up here. I thought for some reason there might be uh, another heart or something here. I don't want to fall off. Yeah, so they kind of, I don't know, they kind of got more and more just story and puzzle and they kind of forgot about the exploration. Uh, and you know, you see a lot of people who when they talk about them they're like, oh, you know, that was just all like, you know, NES, uh, NES hard jankiness or whatever. Uh, you know, now we can actually show proper hints and stuff, but really I don't think a lot of the... the hints and stuff in the later Zelda games, they're not really hints, they're just telling you where it is, you know, where the hidden thing is or whatever. Like the cracked walls in this, they're not, uh, they're not hints, they just tell you, put a bomb here, like the, uh, as soon as you've seen one cracked wall in one Zelda game, then from then on, they might as well just replace them with, like, a big sign saying, like, you know, trade a bomb for a heart here or something. Uh, because there's no real thinking involved anymore. I think, you know, when I was talking about Zelda 1, I think I probably had mentioned that, uh... Uh, uh, I'll keep going. I hope he's just, uh, overstating it or whatever. He's, uh... I don't think you actually really need it to get through here. Hopefully I'll have enough. I mean, I've got the double length uh, meter, which I don't think they would uh, take into account. Or, you know, they wouldn't expect me to have it. Plus, there's going to be lots of uh, refills. 
Yeah, so like in Zelda 1, uh, you know, there wasn't any cracks or anything, but the, uh, you know, you knew where the stuff was because you just paid attention and it was, you know, it was hidden somewhere where, uh, you know, if you were paying attention, you would know, like, okay. There's, you know, a really suspicious looking, uh, you know, dead end or whatever, so I'll try putting a bomb there. No, it's, you know, it's a hidden thing. Uh, okay. Like the the one single tree was the one that you burned, and uh, you know you never really had to actually uh, just burn every bush and bomb every wall. I think you know the problem ended up being that you know uh, people will optimize the fun out of a game. Uh, I think that's a thing that's been you know said a lot before is that uh, you know if you give somebody the option of you know, looking and thinking, and, you know, maybe they spend 20 minutes just going over their map and uh, thinking about, you know, where the hidden thing could be and, uh, you know, paying attention and stuff like that. Or they have the option of spending three hours uh, walking around bombing walls. The spending three hours bombing walls is mentally less, you know, difficult, so that's what they'll do. Uh, it's like, you know, people who get, you know, they get stuck at a boss in Dark Souls and then instead of being like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm doing something wrong, you know, I, you know, I sh should be, you know, I'll pay attention a bit more, see, see what's going on, or maybe, uh, maybe I'm not supposed to be going this way yet, I'll just try go, you know, I'll go explore a different direction. Instead of doing that, they go and they grind levels for five hours or something. And then they go and they're like, oh, Dark Souls, it needs so much grinding. When it's like, no, not if you're like, you know, just think and you don't, then you won't need to grind. Okay. That was, uh, I, I don't know, I guess it would be filled by magic. You know, but people, you know, they don't want to think, so they, they take the boring, uh, long way. And I think that ended up, you know, really affecting the Zelda games a lot. Oh wow, they, these guys do a ton of damage. Wow, they, they do three hearts of damage, and that's even with uh, me taking half damage. Probably magic, and I've got a full magic meter. Oh, this would be the no. Okay, I thought this would be the shield. Okay, 
I'll go get this because I need a key and it's not a key. Though I think there is, I don't know, an interesting kind of, I don't know, question with, you know, regards to the hidden stuff, uh, you know, the uh, bur uh, bombable walls and stuff, uh, because, you know, I don't think there's really a, a way to just say, like, okay, if you do this, it will be the correct, uh, the correct thing to do. Uh, you know, I think it's really, it's really dependent on, like, the psychology of the player and, uh, Uh, you know, and how the whole world and stuff is designed, like, uh, you know, I think the mimics in, uh, Dark Souls are kind of, they have a, sort of a similar problem, uh, the mimics and the hidden walls in it, because, uh, as soon as you find the first mimic in Sen's Fortress, which I think is, well, uh, you know, telegraphed, like, you go in and there's, like, blood stains, and it's in kind of a weird angle and stuff like that. Uh, and, you know, if you're playing online, there's gonna be all sorts of blood stains around it. Okay, uh... I need to kill these guys somehow. But yeah, as soon as you've killed, oh, as soon as you've killed the first mimic in Dark Souls, you know, okay, there's mimics in Dark Souls, and then you just blindly hit every chest that you come across. Which then, you know, it kind of it removes the point of them. Like, they might as well just be an enemy standing next to the chest because you you're gonna know. You know, every time you see a chest, you just get ready to fight a mimic, and then you hit it, and then, you know, either it's a mimic or it's a no, or it's not. But there's no surprise or anything. Uh, and same with the hidden doors. Like, you know, a lot of them are in places where it's like, okay, this this shouldn't be a dead end. There should be something here. Or, you know, you look at the uh, the environment and you say, like, okay, I, I can see a room there, there's no obvious way to get into it, but here's a big empty wall. Uh, this must be a hidden wall. But it's easier just to constantly hit all the walls and stuff, so as soon as you know that hidden walls are a thing, you just start hitting every wall, and it just becomes a bother. So I think, I don't know, like, the, the way to do it would be to have it all sort of, uh, I don't know, you wouldn't be able to have some, like, overarching design plan, you know, like, you know, tell the, the level developers, okay, you can put walls here like this or whatever. Uh, it would have to, I think, be more like, uh, you know, what one spot has a hidden wall, but then uh, other spots, like, punish you for hitting the walls when you're not supposed to.
you know, and same with chests, like maybe if uh, some chests, you, you know, you would break them if you hit them, but there were, uh, you know, there were tells, but more like environmental rather than just, okay, this chest for some reason has a, you know, it's chain going the other way or whatever. Uh, and then also you could have other kinds of mimics like, uh, you know, like bonfire mimics or ladder mimics or whatever. But you would just have to keep the player, like, as they play through the game, they would have to have, you know, no idea what anything could be, and they would always have to just be paying attention. Like, uh, you know, here, oh, here's a, uh, a, you know, a ladder that just doesn't seem to go anywhere or something, you know, it just ends. So they would be like, okay, uh, you know, and maybe it's got, like, blood stains on it and stuff. So they would be like, okay, this is, something is up with this ladder. Uh, or, you know, a bonfire, like, in the middle of a bunch of enemies, where, you know, they never put bonfires in front of enemies, because then, when you respawn, you would be killed. So if you saw that, you'd be like, okay, this, you know, this is not a, a bonfire. Yeah, well, that's not really, yeah, but, you know, I know that's Dark Souls, but, uh... You know, then something like that for Zelda, you know, where, uh, you know, you've got one kind of cracked spot, cracked wall in like a certain spot or whatever. You know, or, or maybe you don't have cracked walls, but have like burn burnable trees and have that you can burn any tree, but only certain ones actually like do something. Uh, and have those be the, you know, the, the specific ones that you, you know, that are important. Uh, but then have other things like, uh, well, yeah, the first game actually, it does have that, have that. It has like the waterfall you go through in the one spot and there's, uh, I don't know what else. Uh, there's some spots where you push blocks or there's like an Armo statue that you fight in order to get to the thing that's under him. Yeah, just I think, you know, whatever it is, it should be something that kind of forces them to continue paying attention constantly instead of just being like, oh, okay, uh, you, you can you can bomb walls, so I'm just going to bomb every wall. Or, oh, okay, you know, you can, you can burn trees, so I'm just going to burn every tree, and then they just kind of blindly keep going with that. You know, it needs to kind of keep them constantly throughout the game, uh, you know, thinking and paying attention. Oh, stop. Okay. So I, I think I go out and around, and then I get the uh, mirror shield here. And I think I immediately go into a room that has just a whole bunch of lasers firing at me. Oh, and I would say, like, for anybody who does think that, oh, you know, you, you can't beat Dark Souls or Zelda uh, blind, like, you know, you need a guide. Uh, there's a YouTuber called K Plays, uh, K A Y. Uh, I don't think she's not active anymore, but uh, she has a really good uh, let's play of. Uh, well, she started with Dark Souls. Apparently, like her her boyfriend liked it, so he got her to play it, and she. I don't think really played games like at all before that. Uh, so she goes from like, you know, not, you know, not playing games really at all uh, when she starts. Uh, to being like really good at it uh, at the end. Uh, and she beat like the entire game blind and I think she found like 
you know, all the hidden stuff, basically. Uh, I don't remember if she found uh, the Great Hollow, but aside from that, like, she just, she beat the entire game uh, blind. Uh, southwest corner. Uh, and I think that was kind of... Hmm. Uh, that was kind of the the thing that uh, kind of got her, you know, some fame. I think she was in some, like, you know, all the different uh, game sites uh, talked about, about her at that time, uh, at that point. But uh, she did, uh, sometime after that, do a uh, playthrough of the first Zelda. Okay, it's gone. Ah, uh, go, go, go. <sighs> annoying. Uh, yeah, she does like a complete blind playthrough of the first Zelda, and again, just paying attention and, uh, uh, you know, drawing maps and stuff. Okay, uh, I guess that, uh, oops. I guess that just toggles back and forth. But yeah, that, it's a really good playthrough, uh, both of them. And she does like Zelda, or Dark Souls 2, and I think she started 3, uh, but then I think her PlayStation crashed or whatever, and then she kind of stopped playing. This doesn't, uh, okay. I was worried that was gonna make me just fall off into nowhere or something. Uh, and then I would have to go all the way back through the dungeon. I'm not really sure what else there's to say about the Zelda games. Uh...
Yeah, I do wish there was more games like Zelda 1. Uh, like, you know, there's surprisingly few, even uh, even on the NES, like those ki kinds of games weren't really that common. Uh, like, there's Golden Axe Warrior, which is fairly similar. Uh, I don't think it's as good, but it's it's quite similar. Uh, and there's, like, Utopia, uh, which is quite different. Uh, it's extremely linear, and... Uh, uh, I, I don't find it to be as good. Uh, I, I can't remember if I played both Utopias. I know there's one and two. But yeah, there's just, I don't know, there's not many uh, with that exact kind of uh, play style. Like, I think, uh, I don't know, Dark Souls uh, 1 is kind of the most similar to it in terms of the kind of structure of, uh, you know, it's not just complete open world, go anywhere you like, uh, and, you know, anywhere you go is equally good and whatever. Uh, but it's also not like a linear go here, go here, uh, and it takes place in an actual world. I, th I find that's kind of a, you know, the difference with a lot of Metroidvanias and the things, you know, they are kind of similar to Zelda games, but uh, the thing I don't like about a lot of Metroidvanias is they, they don't really take place in worlds. They're just kind of, they're, they have levels basically where they're, you know, a lot of times it doesn't feel like a world where characters would actually live and stuff. Uh, they just feel like a bunch of random caves of different colors uh, connected together. Okay, that doesn't... Uh... I was hoping the silver arrow would, uh... Yes. I'm probably not supposed to have this sword at this point. Which is why everybody's dying so quick. Interesting. I wonder, I know there's, uh, I've seen there's hacks for some games that, uh, uh, you run them on an emulator, I think, but they make it, or, you know, an FPGA or whatever, or flashcard, but they, uh, they changed the game to use a, uh, there was a chip that, uh, I think it, I don't know, it let the game run at a higher clock rate or something. Uh, I know there's, I've seen there's like hacks for certain games that they make it as if the game used that chip uh, when it didn't because of, you know, it wasn't, it didn't exist at that point or for cost cutting or whatever. Uh, but I think, you know, Link to the Past would probably uh, benefit from that because there has been quite a few spots where the game is obviously slowing down. Uh, I guess they're not typically during actual gameplay. But uh, it still would be nice if, like, you know, those explosions were at proper speed. Alright, so I'm doing pretty good as far as uh, hearts go. Like, uh... Yeah, I've got, uh, what, four and a half heart pieces left. I think I've, I do have most of the stuff.
Yeah, I'll get the uh, the next armor in this dungeon. Uh, there's four and a half heart pieces I'm missing. Uh, and that's basically it. I think that's all the equipment. Uh, so I'm gonna just break here. Uh, then I guess I might as well go through and finish it now.